Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for the entire metro region by DFL Senate District 42. With me tonight are the two best political watchdog bloggers in Minnesota. Joe Bodell is the co-founder of Minnesota Progressive Project and Tommy Johnson, one of our associate producers, writes for MPP on a regular basis. Both live in Senate District 42 and I live in Senate District 41. And we're gonna be talking about our Republican legislators, that is the ones that represent us in Edina, West Bloomington, Eden Prairie, and Minnetonka. Tommy, let's start with you. Uh, David Han is- Senator from 42, right? Senator from 42. Uh, complete wing nut. Uh, David is, is a very religious guy. Uh, but he doesn't believe in, in feeding the poor. Senator Hahn introduced a bill to cut Meals on Wheels. This is something that the Republicans tried to do in Eden Prairie in 2007. Uh, didn't work here in Eden Prairie. Now they tried to do it in the state and it didn't work across the state because of the outcry people had. Who else is in, on your agenda here, Tommy? Uh, Jennifer Loon. Uh, I like Jennifer. Representative Loon is different. She's not a wingnut like David Hahn is. Uh, she is corporate America, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, old-fashioned Republican Party. She's very predictable. What the National Chamber of Commerce wants, that's what she's going to vote. Now, it's important to remember that there's a big difference between your local chambers of commerce and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The local uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, don't necessarily agree uh, with what the, the national does. She is a national party line Republican elected locally. Joe, let's turn to you. Uh, who, can, who can you report on for us? Well, on the other side of 42, you have Kirk Stensrud, who it, it's difficult to tell anything about him. Uh, all we have about him are very, very partisan uh, emails and, and messages sent to constituents, but we don't really know where he stands other than towing the line on a lot of extremely regressive policies that are being pushed at the legislature. Uh, I wrote a letter to him uh, last week uh, about a constitutional amendment and have not heard back. Uh, there have not been any major bills, to my knowledge, that uh, have his name attached to them. Uh, it could be said that he's, he's keeping his head down, which is probably a, a good political strategy, uh, considering that he beat a, a popular uh, state representative in Maria Rood uh, by an extremely slim margin in a very, very good Republican year. Uh, so the, the leadership is not there. Uh, we don't have the same kind of reasoned, uh, thoughtful, um, uh, touching leadership that we had from Maria Rood. Who else can you report on? Well, you have Jeff Michelle uh, representing your Senate district in, in Senator. 41. And he has uh, turned himself into quite the character uh, in this legislative session. Uh, very early on, you had a, a video clip of, of Senator Michelle uh, claiming that he wasn't going to allow any local government aid cuts to Bloomington a part of the, the city that he represents. And a reporter in the room asked him, Senator Michelle, does Bloomington get any local government aid? And his, his response was a, an ear-to-ear -ear grin, because no, Bloomington doesn't get any local government aid. Cheshire cat indeed, grin. Indeed, indeed, exactly. Well, I want to uh, remind uh, you fellows and our audience about uh, the two House uh, people in uh, 41. We have uh, uh, Keith Downey. Keith is the one that introduced legislation early in the session which would have eliminated pay equity, one of the uh, most egregious political errors that I've ever seen. Uh, I think he's since recanted, but, uh, but that was in his original bill that he introduced. And Pat Mazarol, uh, I think uh, over in 41B, enough said uh, if we say that he uh, is one of the authors of the uh, photo ID bill, which of course is a, uh, a bill looking for a problem. Uh, seeking to spend millions of dollars in uh, in these uh, era of budgetary crisis, and it's uh, almost unheard of the the length that the Republican Party will go to to implement their party platform uh, over at the legislature. Well, I, I guess as a, as a husband and a, a father of two daughters, that pay equity that Downey introduced to get rid of really hits home. What Downey was saying is it's okay to discriminate against my wife and my daughters. And I'm sorry, it's not okay to discriminate against how much pay my wife and my daughters get. It's not okay to discriminate against anybody. Well, and I think that the West Metro in particular, the, the Southwest Metro, uh, which we call home, uh, was, was the site of some really, really nefarious politics in the 2010 election. I mean, Maria Rood and Paul Rosenthal 
were uh, targeted very heavily by corporate interests in this election cycle, and they, they paid for it. They had a lot of money spent against them, and they have been replaced with people who are, you know, Representative Stensrud, Representative Mazarol, uh, Representative Loon was already on their side. I mean, the Chamber of Commerce and the corporate interests in this state really have their people in the legislature right now, and it's, it's a very, very bad situation for the state. Newspapers all over the state have derided the Republicans' proposed amendment to define marriage as ridiculous at best and mean-spirited at worst. Representative Steve Simon's testimony on the bill that would put a Republican-crafted constitutional amendment on the 2012 ballot has gone viral on the Internet. The proposed amendment would shoehorn a definition of marriage into the state constitution if approved by the voters. Here's Steve's perspective. We have to be careful about trying to enshrine our beliefs, however religiously valid we may believe them to be, in the Minnesota Constitution. And what I'm hearing today and what I heard on Friday was largely a religious justification for a change in the Minnesota Constitution. I don't think that's right. I don't think it's fair. I think it departs from our tradition. The other thing, which I know makes some people squirm, but I think we have to discuss it, both uh, during an election campaign but here at the legislature too, is how much of homosexuality is nature versus nurture. Is this something that you learn or acquire, or is this something that you're born with? Is this just another lifestyle choice, like skateboarding or gardening? Or is this something that's innate with a human being? And I, I want to take a page from what I heard last Friday in the Senate testimony. There was a member of the clergy, I, uh, forgive me, I can't remember his name, and he said, you know what? Sexuality and sexual orientation are a gift from God. And I think that's true. And I think the scientific evidence shows more and more every day that sexuality and sexual orientation are innate and something that people are born with. And I would ask everyone on this committee, not today, not tomorrow, not next week, not even this year, but at a moment uh, when you can be alone with your own thoughts to ask yourself if that's true, if it's even possibly true, what does that mean to the moral force of your argument? Just ask yourself, not now in the glare of the Capitol and caucuses and interest groups, but ask yourself if it's true that sexual orientation is innate, God-given, then what does it mean to the moral force of your argument? And I guess the, to put it in the vernacular, what I would ask is, how many more gay people does God have to create before we ask ourselves whether or not God actually wants them around? Please, and, please, uh, please keep applause to yourselves. How many gay people does God have to create before we ask ourselves whether the living of their lives the way they wish as long as they don't harm others is a godly and holy and happy and glorious thing. I've answered that for myself. I don't think everyone's asked, answered that for themselves necessarily in this room. But I'm comfortable with a society uh, and, a, and, uh, and a tradition that, that bends towards justice and fairness and wholeness and openness and compassion. And I do think, as others have said before me more eloquently, that that's where the arc of history is bending as well. And I truly believe that in a generation, maybe not even a generation, but certainly many generations from now, if we pass this, if we put it on the ballot, if this becomes part of our Constitution, history will judge us all very, very harshly. And I think that the people who vote for this today and in the future um, will have a, a will, will, although their children and grandchildren can and should be very proud of them for their service to the state of Minnesota, will on this issue not be so proud. And there may even be some justifiable shame there as well. And I think that's something that we all have to, to think about and uh, justify in our own consciousness. So I strongly urge a no vote. That was powerful. It is. Fellows, uh, what do you think about uh, Steve's remarks? I, I think it's, it's an amazingly powerful, amazingly simple moral argument about where we need to go as a society. And I think Representative Simon set that perfectly in a, in a sound bite that, as you said, has gone viral on the internet. Well, I, the Minneapolis paper, uh, known as the Red Star in uh, Republican uh, circles, uh, uh, had a headline, don't put bigotry up for a vote. And I think that hits the nail on the head. Tommy, what do you think? I think that's exactly what it is. Politically speaking, the Republicans are simply on the wrong side of history on this absolutely. issue. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it's telling that a, that a Midwestern state like Iowa can have gay marriage and the sky doesn't fall. Yet Minnesota is still stuck in, in the 20th century with a Republican legislature that just has to get a constitutional amendment on the ballot to get their vote out in the next election. Now, when you see the caliber, or shall I say, the lack of caliber of some of the people that are over there right now uh, 
uh, making policy for the state of Minnesota or trying to make policy or ignoring problems that really exist like the budget to dilly dally around with uh, something that's offensive to so many Minnesotans. It's, uh, it's incredible to me that we find ourselves here. Here's Ken Martin, state party chair's perspective on the Republican mantra. These Republicans in this legislature are letting their far right wing ideology get the better of them. Thank God for 8,750 votes and that we have Governor Dayton uh, in office, or otherwise we'd be just like Wisconsin and states like uh, Indiana and Michigan and Ohio, uh, facing the kind of draconian policies that have been pushed in those states. We have a, a goalie uh, in Governor Dayton who's going to make sure that none of that stuff passes, and thank God for that. Otherwise, this state as we know it, you might as well kiss it goodbye. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for DFL Senate District 42, Lori Pryor, Chair. Democratic Visions can also be seen on YouTube and at dflsd42.org.